Hello everyone, my name is Alberto and today I'm going to talk about the secondary memory for my IDT1 midterm assignment. The secondary memory is one of the two subcategories of computer memory, responsible for the storage of information and data. Indeed, computer memory includes both the primary memory featured by the RAM and ROM and the secondary one like CDs, DVDs, hard disks, etc. Um, there are many different devices that store different kinds of data, but it's important to remember that the secondary memory can be a tool for storage, even if it's not connected to any source of power. Um, this is actually useful uh, if we want to collect data for a longer permanent period without spending too much. Um, every electronically computing device has an external memory. Um, this can be either fixed or removable and allows us to retain the data after shutting off our computers. Um, secondary memories are useful in data protection and data backup because of their portability. Um, information can be shifted from a device to another very easily, and CDs, DVDs, and pen drives allow us to collect data and keep it for future use. So now we're going to look at the key milestones in the development of secondary memories. For number one, we have CD-ROM. The CD-ROM, the compact disk read-only memory, was created in the 84. It stores digital data by using the same format as the audio compact disk and encodes bits of data into the lower surface of the disk, resulting in larger data storage. CD-ROMs make use of optical rays in order to process the information. They had revolutionary effects in the early 80s by giving the opportunity to store large amounts of data in such small thin circle-shaped device. For number two, we have Digital Video Display, DVD. AKA for Digital Versatile Disk, these were introduced in 1997. These can store much larger amounts of data than CDs and collect multimedia files that require a larger storage space. The high storage capacity makes them capable of containing full-length movies on a single disk. Um, these are widely used for music, software, personal computing, or video storage. Number three is a pen drive. These portable using storage devices were invented in 1998. They have multiple names, flash drives, thumb drives, USB drives, or key drives. PDs do not use lasers and magnetic fields, but they use a solid state memory. Drives work as we can write and erase data by just using electric signals. Their storage capacity, by the way, is between a hard disk and a CD. For number four, we have the Blu-ray. The next generation of optical disk format is the Blu-ray, which was introduced in 2003. Blu-rays used to store HD videos and high density storage. The name, in fact, is inspired to the blue laser that stores more data than a DVD. Its competitor is, in fact, HD DVD. For number five, we have holographic storage. Um, in order to increase storage capabilities, scientists are now working on a new optical storage method called holographic memory that uses the volume of the recording medium and not only the surface area. Three-dimensional data storage will allow us to store more information in a smaller space on faster data transfer times. A holographic storage system might be built in the next three or four years, and we will be introduced to a desktop version of such a high-density storage system. For number six, we have cloud backup solution. Thanks to the cloud storage system, we can access the data we have stored in the cloud from anywhere we want. So far, the technology may look exciting and convenient, but posting one's work online rather than on a personal storage system could lead to some risk. Could all of these mean the end of the silicon era? Well, it surely means that increasing wider data storage and new logical patterns for our computers. The new forms of data storage allow access to data from any geographical location, if each one of us is provided a device and an internet connection. This makes it possible to access data from any location. Important changes in the way work and study are carried out are coming, as it is no longer necessary to be physically present in the workplace or in a class. These methods allow for easier data retention because the risk of deterioration of the physical support or loss of the same and therefore of the data contained therein are avoided. Over the next few years, online backup is expected to completely replace saving documents via the physical devices we know today. A survey conducted by Unitrans showed that an increasing usage of a cloud for data protection. 400 respondents from organizations and industries took part. The results show that data loss continues to be a serious problem, but most organizations are increasing the use of cloud to protect their data. In Figure 1, 30% of responding organizations reporting losing data as the result of an outage. 
The use of the cloud to avoid data loss has greatly increased over the last four years. 60% of respondents refer usage of cloud and the growth of usage is 12% from 2016 to 2019, as is seen in figure two. Overall, 84% of organizations reported using the cloud to store data or backups. Fewer than 10% of responders don't use the cloud for file and data storage or have no plans to add it this year, as in figure three. The tech giants, including Google, are investing money and resources in order to offer their users more efficient, secure backup service based on the data centers of the US giant, which is based in Mountain View. However, cloud data storage has high potential risk, referring to holes in the security and privacy of personal data. Now, in conclusion, the development of technology has allowed us to move from substantially domestic data storage system by using a physical support to dematerialized system. But if physical drive or in-house network are controlled by the ones who own it, cloud storage system is not one's personal property. The provider controls the network, so is able to technically have full access to all the information in it. Some people are concerned that the network can be exploited to access people's personal information, especially when it comes to medical and government files. Then, if something happens to data on the network, the provider is not necessarily liable to even help recover the loss of corrupted data. Now, the main question is, what could happen to all personal data put into a platform if the cloud suffers any kinds of problem? How could we recover our data?